So Roblox has made improvements to the editable mesh and image API. And what these APIs allow for is for modifying dimension meshes and images in both studio and in experiences. So I'm just going to overview this update. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon content and let's get into the video. So there is this forum post about the studio beta feature and updates to inexperienced mesh and image APIs. Where the Roblox staff is saying that last year they introduced the inexperienced mesh and image APIs and since then they have been hard at working addressing the feedback to improve the product. Where they are also excited to release some important updates to the studio beta that addresses some of the feedback that you given. One of the things is the split attribute store multiple attributes on a single vertex. Since previously you are only able to I think store one, the drawing APIs now support different blending options, which is for for example color blends. Then there is the new read pixel buffer and right pixel buffer APIs, which we are going to check out in a minute, and improvements to the performance and memory. And here are just few notes about the update, saying that if you already have this beta feature enabled, you should already have the access to the updates in Studio. And while this update is still in Studio Beta, they hope to allow publishing experiences with these APIs in the future. And they are also finalizing the permission and usage policy around these APIs, which will be announced soon in an upcoming dev forum post. And they basically just appreciate the patience and they keep working on the edge cases and optimization requirements. But now there is the editable mesh update paragraph. And again, there is a note saying that if you already saved the places that leverage editable mesh APIs, you might need to update your script since the previous scripts may no longer work. And also please remember that they are actively working on these APIs and may introduce further breaking changes leading up to the full release. And speaking about this, I'm also going to showcase basically a few examples that people have given in this dev forum post. But let's move on to the split attributes, where they say that they've updated the API to allow multiple attributes to be stored on a single vertex. For example, if you wanted to get a sharp cube, previously that would require duplicating the corner vertices so that you could get a sharp case between the faces. And this would lead to more vertices and methods like get adjacent vertices and get adjacent faces. But basically these two methods wouldn't work as expected. And now they have added the API functions that allow you to have split attributes on the normal UV coordinates and color at a single vertex. And this now removes the need for duplicating vertices just to get different attributes at the same location and is especially useful for sharp edges and creases. So the best example to illustrate these changes is to try and procedurally create a simple sharp cube. So with the previous API version, this cube that you see on the screen right now would have 24 vertices and 24 normals. And this would be the same as basically stacking 4 cubes with the new and updated API on top of each other. So you can see a pretty major change. And now with the updated API that supports split attributes, you now only need 8 vertices and 6 normals to procedurally create the same queue. And this is a much more intuitive way of dealing with vertex attributes. Which now thinking about it, I'm not really sure why this wasn't implemented from the start. But they also provide a code snippet that would create the above sharp cube using the previous API while duplicating the vertices. And previously the code would basically look like this, where you have to make a local variable for all of the vertices, then create the faces and create them at basically the specified vectors. So you can imagine that making anything other than a cube would basically be a hassle with a lot of lines of code and like they mentioned it wouldn't be too intuitive. But now there is the equivalent code with the updated API which we can actually overview. And the make sure cube function is basically the same except this time it already uses the add vertex method. And there is also the editable mesh removed unused method which is there because we override all of the default normals and we can basically just remove them. And to compare the add sharp quad function now, you basically just use the add normal method and you create face id1 and face id2. And you also use the set face normals method on them. And now for the more complicated models with sharp edges, like the one below, the difference is even more substantial. Where the previous API would have to create over 30,000 vertices and normals, and this time it's only 7,000 vertices and 6 normals again. And a little bit for a fun fact, I actually used to create something like this in Blender for when I was doing logos. I don't know if I have it saved anywhere, but I'm going to put it on the screen while editing. But I'm probably just going to cut the company name from it. But anyways, there is a note saying that you only need 6 normals if the shape above is static and you will need to create more than 6 normals if you would like the shape to be deformable and one big change is that now they have a more types of stable IDs and in addition to vertex IDs and face IDs there are now also normals
normal IDs, UV IDs and color IDs as well. And you can create those manually as in the sharp cube example, or if you don't need to have split attributes on a vertex, the at triangle method will automatically create the match attribute IDs on each vertex. And they also provide an example with creating a plane with a smooth color gradient using the color IDs that are created by at triangle. So if I expand this, it's basically just going to create this gradient on this flat plane and with basically this code you are able to set the color IDs for these vertices. And now there is the other notable fixes paragraph where the editable mesh preview now works under the humanoid models and the fast cluster rendering is now supported and editable mesh now works on the devices running Mac lower than Mac OS 11 and cloning an editable mesh with zero triangles will no longer cause a crash. So that's for the editable mesh and now you can actually move into the editable image where first you can see the blend modes under the draw API. But basically, the following editable image APIs, now support setting the optional image combine type, are you meant to specify how to blend the pixels, where you have the draw circle, draw rectangle and draw line. And by setting the image combine type, you can choose between the following blending options, where you have the blend source over, override, alpha, blend, add and multiply, where they basically do the things that they are explained right here. And I need to say that it's finally nice to have at least some image manipulation in the Roblox Studio engine. But basically, here are some examples of using the DrawSilker API to draw the same circle onto the same background but with various blend type options selected. So if I zoom this in, on all of these images you have the background and the foreground and this is the blend source, the override on the right, then the alpha blend and add. And lastly there is also multiply. So if you for example use a program like Photoshop or GIMP, this should be the same as blending options for layers. But moving on to the read pixel buffer and the red pixel buffer APIs. Saying that this API basically returns a Luau buffer object, which I'm not really sure what it is, where the right pixel also takes the buffer object as an argument. And this is much more memory efficient than the table version of these APIs. And that's because the each pixel can be represented by 4 bytes in the buffer rather than 4 times 4 bytes doubles in the table. And there is another example showing the comparison between the read pixel and the right pixel and the same versions but with a buffer. And I also mentioned that both of these versions of APIs will still be available in the studio beta. But they are considering dropping the versions without the buffer for the full release, where I'm guessing that they are going to stick with the buffer option. And if I just expand this example right here, this is the code that inverts the editable image using the read pixel API, and this is the same version but with the read pixel buffer, which is way more memory efficient. And there are also the performance and memory improvements, saying that editable image is an incredibly powerful API, since this gives you a direct Lua access to the pixels. And that level of access can result in suboptimal performance and memory overhead, if it's of course not used correctly. And here they say that they basically just optimize this for you to have more freedom to do more with the scripts. And they are also continuing to add performance and memory improvements to both the editable image and editable mesh APIs. And lastly there is the what's next, where they mostly want to address the major workflow issues. And they also made changes to the memory management, where they are considering adding a workflow that will ensure that the device has enough memory overhead before creating the editable image or editable mesh when requested. So if you are for example on a low-end phone that doesn't really have too much memory, you might not be able to create the editable mesh and editable images on the client. And secondly there is the multi-owner reference instead of the mesh image as children, which prevents using the same editable data across multiple instances, and they also work on a new way of from preventing the editable data, as well as updating the way multiple instances reference these asset-like objects with a shared ownership. And this was a little bit to go over, so sadly I'm not going to have enough time to really show this in studio, but basically a few people have pointed out that this is kind of breaking their projects. For example like this one. Or I even saw another one that was right here from Zack Attack, who has even recently commented under one of my videos, so shout out to him. But this update basically broke the water VFX, which you can basically see right here. And yeah, again, with further updates, it's basically just going to break. So I would be actually careful with using this API now. And lastly, I should maybe actually show how to enable and use this API in Studio. So I am on an empty base plate and let's just firstly go into File, 
then beta features, and then the editable image and editable mesh is right here on top. So you just want to enable this option then press on save and it's going to prompt you to restart studio. And after that if I for example just go to the starter player then the starter player scripts and add a local script, I should be able to just paste the code in and just change the code a little bit. Then just do a playtest. This should actually work but apparently it isn't. And I even checked the documentation so I don't really know what's up with that since it should be parented under a mesh part but sadly I don't really have time for that. But anyways, that's basically going to be it for today so you can go check out my Patreon content and if you like and support the channel and yeah, thank you guys for watching, hope you have a nice day and see you guys.